Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show with your host Ram and the Cricket Happening Show is today is going to start off with the Bangladesh League, uh, Bangladesh Premier League Finals which was today played between, uh, uh, between Dhaka Gladiators who already were the uh, champions in the inaugural season uh, and uh, once again uh, Dhaka Gladiators uh, went on to win the Bangladesh Premier League 2013 today. In fact, this was the second uh, consecutive time that Dhaka Gladiators have won the uh, championship that is the Bangladesh Premier League and they had a win over Shittagong Kings. Shittagong Kings were defeated by 43 runs. So Dhaka Gladiators are the champions of the Bangladesh Premier League for the second consecutive time and congratulations to them. We all know that Dhaka Gladiators had a very very strong team. If you look at the, bat, the players who were there in the team uh, you can always make it, uh, you can always feel that they are very, very strong on paper. But they translated it uh, into the field today and uh, saw to it that Dhaka Gladiators uh, took the Bangladesh Premier League 2013 Championship. So, just talking about that, so I'm going to start off with this uh, particular news. Uh, so, Dhaka Gladiators were the ones who actually won the toss. Uh, in fact, um, it was uh, Chittagong Kings uh, who actually won the toss and they inserted the Dhaka Gladiators in. Now, Dhaka Gladiators actually boosts of, I mean, boasts of uh, lots of players uh, who are some big names there. But uh, the person who actually played uh, superbly there was uh, the young, youngster from Bangladesh. He was a very, very promising uh, talent, as we know. Uh, he has already got a century, one maiden century in one-day internationals. And that was Anamul Haq, who played a beautiful innings of 58 of just 36 deliveries, six fours and two sixes in that knock and he played superbly. Anamul Haq, as you know, he has lots of strokes in his repertoire and that's what he unveiled today. He got good company from, uh, from, his, uh, from his colleague Shakib Bil Hassan, who is, the captain of the, um, who is the captain of the team. And uh, in fact, Shakib Bil Hassan contributed 41 runs of 29 balls with two fours and two six. And Mohamed Ashraful at the top of the order, um, as you know, he made uh, a very good 24 of 16 balls with two fours and one six. But uh, Dhaka Gladiators uh, didn't, I mean, uh, they suffered an early reverse as Tilgat Dilshan, the opener, was clean bowled by Taskin Ahmed for two. But uh, Mohamed Ashraful, Anamul Haq and Shakib Lassan contributing uh, in good measure uh, took this score of Dhaka Gladiators to 172 for nine of the 20 overs and it turned out to be a winning score. Uh, Kiran Polad failed, uh, he made only nine runs of 10 balls with one four. Uh, Stevens made eight of 13 balls. Uh, Josh Cobb was out for three of six balls. Mashraf Mutaza was out for eight of three balls with two fours. Alfonso Thomas was out for four. Mashraf Hazan was not out on one. 172 for nine of 20 overs was out. Dhaka Gladiators put on the board. The balling figures. Taskin Ahmed who has been a very, very, uh, very impressive uh, bowler uh, in this particular uh, Bangladesh Premier League and I'm sure the Bangladeshi selectors might be looking at him. He's been bowling in the right areas. Uh, four overs, no more than 228 for him. Dilhara, four overs, 229. Rubel Hussain picked up all the wickets. Four overs, none for 44, even though it was costly. Four for 44 for uh, Rubel Hussain. All the fours coming into Rubel Hussain's, uh, uh, Hussain's uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, his uh, over uh, book there. Aina Maluk Jr., two overs, none for 18. Mahmoud Labol, two overs for 22. And Ravi Bopara, uh, four overs, no more than one for 28. As far as Shittagong Kings were concerned, uh, well, uh, they were bowled out for 129. Uh, for Shredagon King, Jason Roy, uh, the opener, uh, once again played very well. He hit a very a good 40 of 28 balls with six fours. Uh, and um, Nurul Hassan uh, made only 14. But Mehmudullah, the captain, came in and he tried his bet, but uh, he couldn't get any support from the lower order. And that's what uh, precisely Mehmudullah had to attempt some big strokes there. And in, in trying to actually uh, trying to get a win for Shredagon Kings, Mehmudullah succumbed, uh, making 44 of 28 balls with three fours and three sixes and uh, the only other two persons who reached double figures there was Nurul Hussain with 14 of 10 balls with three fours and Arif Ullak, uh, making 12 of uh, as many balls with no boundaries. Uh, 129 all out. Uh, the Jayasuriya was out for five of seven balls. Uh, Bopara continued his poor form in this Bangladesh Premier League. He was out for just two. Uh, Ryan Tundoshad was been uh, a very very consistent performer in this Bangladesh Premier League and has played a good role uh, for uh, for Shittagong Kings to actually reach the final. Uh, this time failed. He was gone for two. Uh, and uh, Dilhara made one. Uh, there's nothing to really talk about. 129 all out. 
the Dhaka Gladiators winning the match by 43 runs and for the second consecutive time um, taking this uh, Bangladesh, b being the champions of the Bangladesh Premier League 2013. Now as far as bowling was concerned, bowling was absolutely on the mark. Marshal Vimurta is at 3 overs 1 for 25. Alfonso Thomas uh, got um, the ball 2.5 overs no more in 19 runs and 3 wickets. Uh, Moshra Hussain was impressive, 4 overs no more in 3 for 26. 1 for 30 for Sajli and Shakib. Shakib has bowled 3 overs 1 for 21. Well, the player of the match went to Moshra Hussain because Moshra Hussain was the one who took the key wickets. He took the Jason Royce wicket, Nurul Hassan, and he also had Ryan Tandu Shat, which was a very, very important wicket. So Moshra Hussain actually got the man of the match, and player of the series went to Shakib and Hassan of Dhaka Gladiators. So thus entered the match, and thus entered the Bangladesh Premier League 2013 with Dhaka Gladiators, the champions. Now, uh, so that is as far as that is concerned. Now, the other thing that I would like to talk about on this particular cricket show is one is uh, Lou Vincent, uh, one would remember. He's a New Zealand uh, batsman, and um, uh, he was not uh, so consistent. He, he didn't play lots of tests, uh, but uh, finally, and in fact, he was, he was playing in the Bangladesh Premier League. He played uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, he's he's a, a player from New Zealand, Lou Vincent. He's not played much matches, but he's a very aggressive type of batsman. Uh, he couldn't, uh, but he couldn't really, really do well in the Test arena. And today, uh, through Twitter, uh, he announced his uh, retirement uh, from all cricket. So he won't be playing any more cricket now, Lou Vincent. Uh, he was the wicketkeeper too. And uh, Lou Vincent, uh, at the age of 34, has decided to say quits as far as cricket is concerned. Now, Lou Vincent only played uh, 23 Test matches, but he played a lot of uh, one-day one internationals uh, for New Zealand. 102 one-day internationals that he played and um, uh, one would remember Lou Vincent because uh, once upon a time uh, you know uh, there was the uh, the India had a, a league uh, which was known as the ICL before the IPL there was something known as an Indian Cricket League which started uh, the board of uh, control for cricket in India were not in favor of that uh, and uh, they said that uh, they were not in favor of that and uh, there was there were no Indian players uh, top Indian players actually playing in that and uh, Lou Vincent uh, was given an opportunity, so he played in that. But um, uh, unfortunately, New Zealand uh, Cricket Board didn't take uh, take easily to it, and he was barred from playing for New Zealand. Uh, then he had to really, uh, you know, um, look at other options uh, where he could make some money. So he played in English county cricket. He played uh, domestic 2020 cricket in Zimbabwe and Bangladesh, and he also represented Auckland uh, um, on the domestic league for uh, for New Zealand. Uh, and as far as uh, the only one good thing that one would re remember of Lou Vincent, he was the opener, he was the wicketkeeper opening batch for the state, he was a very aggressive uh, player there. And the only one good knock that he played in the test matches uh, what was way back in 2001 uh, when um, uh, he w they were playing in Australia. The Australia boasted of some very big names there. Uh, they had a very good bowling attack of Glenn McGrath, Jason Gillespie, uh, Brett Lee, and Shane Vaughan. And he scored a century over there. And he also in the second innings also he uh, played pretty well, uh, scoring uh, 50. Uh, so that was uh, that was in Vakha in Perth. And other than that, um, one another uh, good uh, knock that he made uh, was against Sri Lanka uh, in Wellington, where he made 224. That was his highest score in Test cricket. Uh, so he didn't, uh, as I said, he finished with a, a average of 27 runs in uh, One Day Internationals. Uh, and um, a last his, his last uh, cricketing assignment one could say uh, was in the Bangladesh Premier League 2013 which just ended with Dhaka Gladiators winning the tournament. Uh, he was representing Kulna Royal Bengal. So uh, that was it for Lou Vincent. So Lou Vincent, uh, the former uh, New Zealand uh, wicket, -keeping, wicket keeper come opening batsman Lou Vincent has retired from all cricket. And let's uh, keep the attention focused uh, on New Zealand because we are going to see the second one day international coming up today. As you know New Zealand are already won up in the series. So they would like, there are only three one-day internationals and if uh, New Zealand can beat England today at Napier, at McLean Park, uh, it would be curtains for England as far as uh, this one-day series is concerned because said, uh, there is only three one-day internationals to be played. And if England win, well, they would have leveled the series and then the third one-day international uh, which would be played, uh, third and final one-day internationals would be played at Auckland on 23rd of February uh, will assume a lot of importance like how uh, it happened in the 2020 series. So, but whether how that is going to happen, one has to wait. One has to wait and watch. As far as New Zealand is concerned, they have having a lot of injury problems. Uh, New Zealand have problems in the sense 
uh, Mitchell McLenahan, the left arm, seeing him is out. So in comes Tim Saudi after a long, um, after having an injury, uh, being out of cricket for quite a long time. The last time he played was against Sri Lanka. So he comes in. So that will definitely strengthen because Tim Saudi is a much improved bowler. But one has to see how he's shaping up after coming back from this injury. Uh, but so and but I'm told he is having some very good performances in the uh, New Zealand uh, domestic tournaments. So I'm sure he's ready to go. And then Hamish Rutherford, uh, who made his um, a very impressive debut in the T20 internationals, uh, finds a place in the team uh, due to uh, the opener. I think it was. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to see uh, who was the opener. Uh, who who Omar Guptil. Omar Guptil, as you know, he played. A, he was just getting into form. He was uh, playing well. The other day he limped in. Uh, and actually took New Zealand to victory. Unfortunately, Martin Guptill will be missing the second one at National, which is very, very sad. So that would uh, really dim New Zealand's chances there because he plays a great role as far as uh, one at National cricket is concerned. And uh, he not going there, his place uh, is being going to be taken by Hamish Rutherford, the son of uh, Ken Rutherford, and he'll be making his one at National debut. Now, as far as uh, the other thing that New Zealand would want to want to have is Ross Taylor come hitting some form pretty quickly because that is very essential. Uh, the other players are all in form. Everything is going well for uh, New Zealand, I would say. As far as England are concerned, they are the ones who have to really, really uh, get it on here. And for um, for England, uh, whether uh, whether they're going to retain the same team uh, or whether they're going to make changes, uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, but one has to, I mean, I, I, one can one can say. Uh, that um, you know they might be tempted probably to give uh, uh, Stephen Finn a sort of a break, and uh, but I don't think that would be the right way unless and until he's injured. Um, so one has to wait and watch. So but uh, I think all in all, uh, as I said, that this second one day international, which is coming up at McLean Park in Napier today, is going to be interesting because if New Zealand win, they are taking the series. But if England uh, are able to level the series, uh, that would be good for them. Uh, and also, I'd like to say. Uh, that uh, the conditions are very good. It's going to be warm and sunny here in McLean Park in Napier. So that's the forecast as far as uh, McLean Park in Napier is concerned. Uh, so I, I think the batsmen should uh, make hay while the sun shines. Uh, that's it from me, your host Ram, uh, for the cricket show for today. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Until then, it's goodbye. Thank you.